It's been over a year since we've made our first single pour video on our YouTube channel, and it's a huge part of our identity on the coffee community on YouTube. If it's your first time here, welcome. Welcome to Tails Coffee. But if you're returning, this video will be a, a complete refresher and more of a remastered version of the single pour tutorial. It's going to be a lot of in-depth parts of how I think, what I think, and why I like to use a single pour. If you guys don't know, my name is Vincent, and welcome to my masterclass. If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent, and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee. And if you love educational and experimental videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. So this video will be broken up into the individual concepts that will be shown in the timestamps below. So if you need to go back or kind of skip to something new so that you can rewatch or relearn a technique, it'll be there. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. So a bit of history, I wanted to go over where the single pour idea even came from. And so when I was brewing coffee, when I was learning about coffee, I actually watched a lot of YouTube videos, I bought a lot of books, but none of them actually had enough information on the theories behind the recipes they were providing. And they were always just talking about the bloom and everything. And you know, I, I used it quite often, but I started to question it because I didn't see what the purpose of the bloom was. Now, let me ask you guys, what do you think the purpose of a bloom is? And for most people, it is to actually just degas the coffee so that the gases don't actually interrupt or prevent the water from extracting all the best flavors. So what I thought is, what if I had a pouring technique or grind size that could actually allow me to control the gases and allow me to fully extract all the flavors from the beginning to the end. And that's where we started to create the single pour. We're gonna do a quick overview of the technique itself. Uh, first off, we've got ourselves what we need. We need to have our dripper, of course. Um, I like to use a server, but you can actually have it over a cup instead. Make sure you have your filter paper for it. Um, you're gonna need your coffee beans. It's gonna be needed to be ground, so you're gonna need a grinder or you can buy pre-grounded coffees. We like to use a scale. We highly recommend the scale as well, just for consistency and for repeatability. And then we've always, we're always gonna suggest the gooseneck kettle. It's very important. It doesn't matter if it's electric or if it's stovetop, just a gooseneck kettle. Um, and then the technique itself is pretty simple. We fold the filter paper. We set it into the, into the server. And then we use some water to preheat it, pre-wet it, hold it down. And then we got our ground beans, we pour it in there. I like to use a standard technique, which is 20 grams of beans to 300 grams of water. And we pour once from beginning to end. Very simple technique, but we'll go over the nitty gritty right away. So for the drippers, um, I've got the three main ones that people like to use for pour overs. We've got ourselves the Hario V60. The origami, I much prefer the small size. And then we've got ourselves the Chemex. Now the Chemex is something I, I very, I don't, I don't use very often, so we're gonna leave that aside. But other devices you could use it with is like the Hario Switch or like the Konos, the Mugen. They're all great things to use. If you like to use flat bottoms, this technique does need a little bit of tweaking. I will actually do another video entirely just for the flat bottom technique, but a lot of the information in this video, you can actually take away for it as well. So it does work for flat bottoms, but it does need a small tweaking. So these are the drippers I suggest. And then we have to get ourselves a very nice gooseneck kettle. Now any gooseneck kettle really works at tails. We personally like this one the most, the, the Buono kettles by Hario. It's just the shape of it is really nice. Um, this is really important. It allows us to control the stream really well. Personally though, I love the Time War ones the most just because it has a little sharp divot at the end and so you can pour much more vertical. And uh, yeah, as long as it's a gooseneck kettle, we're good to go. Now for the scale, you can really use honestly any scale. You don't need to use a Hario one that we personally use a lot. Some people like to use the Saya ones because they can connect it to their phones. But if you don't have a huge budget or anything and if you're new, you can actually just get like a normal basic scale like Home Depot, Rona, wherever, like your hardware store is, you can just get a very cheap scale for like $10 and they work perfectly fine. The only argument is that they might not respond as quickly, so you might have to stop like five grams earlier, but I don't think that's gonna ever be a problem for you guys. Also guys, I stir a lot and I do not suggest ever using a spoon to stir. Spoons just cause so much agitation that it's just not even. Uh, get a stir stick. I 
like chopsticks, okay? I just buy a pair of chopsticks and I use one of them. That's it. Metal one, try not to use the wood ones because they can absorb a lot of flavor. Yeah, I use a metal one. That's it. Secret weapon, okay? As for the grind size, um, of course we're gonna need to grind our beans. To be honest, any kind of grinder would work as long as it's a bird grinder, whether it's a hand grinder or a electric one. As long as they can hit the grind size, which they probably can, we're good to go. So the grind size is gonna be a medium fine grind size and this is the kind of grinds we're looking for. And here's a comparison with a coarser grind size. So on the right side, we're gonna have like kind of like the more standardized grind size that most people use when they're doing a bloom. So the coarser grind and on the left side, we're gonna have the medium fine grind size that we always suggest. So we like to use medium fine grind size and that's because when we're extracting coffee, we always talk about even extraction. If the grind sizes are not even, then your coffee's not gonna be extracted evenly. Um, the finer the grind size, the more even the grind size is, and that's kind of why we use the medium fines. Any finer, and we tend to find a little bit more clogging, and that can be a little bit of an issue, so this is kind of the balance we've looked at and found uh, works best for us. That's the medium fine size. So for the water temperature, um, honestly, between 87 degrees and 91 is kind of the sweet spot on like a general basis. But technically, your roast profile and the bean type matters a lot for the water temperature. So the darker the beans, the lower the water temperature is, the lighter the roast, the higher the water temperature you should be using. And that's because in lighter roast, we tend to have less gases being given off. So when we pour, it's gonna be a little bit clearer. It's gonna be less gassy. We want to pour a little bit faster and we want to extract a little bit faster because they tend to sink and clog really quickly. But for coffees that tend to give off a little bit more gases, if you're not really good at pouring slowly, you need to pour with a little bit of a lower water temperature. You can get as low as 81, but that's for like super dark roast, okay? But an 87 works for most things, which is a, up to a medium, medium roast. Anything a little bit darker, you might want to go a little bit lower, but 87 generally is like the lowest I would personally normally go. But for the lighter roast, if it's like super light, super fruity, you can get as high as like 95, 96, and you don't get any of the burn flavors. Now, the reason we use these kind of grind, or this water temperature is because normally the higher the water temperature, the faster the extraction. But sometimes you're gonna extract some of the darker flavors. The lower the water temperature, the less of these darker flavors you're gonna get. And that's because of a scalding or burning flavor issue. So. Trust me on it guys, just use something on the lower side. If, if you have a lot of darker flavors, you're gonna get rid of them quite quickly. And instead you're gonna be left with a really like aromatic and sweet cup of coffee. So I'll just remove all the bitters for you. So if you guys don't have a thermometer or an electric kettle, like I said before earlier, this is actually my favorite kettle and it is not, it's just a stovetop one. So what I would like to do is I normally just boil it. And the second it gets to boiling, I take it off and then I start preparing the rest of the coffees. That would be setting the filters, grinding my beans, getting the beans in the right shape. By the time that is done, this would have dropped a little bit in temperature. Now, a tip for you to cool it down a little bit faster is to not actually fill it up all the way. And I actually think not filling it up all the way is very important because you can actually pour from a little bit of a different height. Now, you can pour, when, you're, when your kettle is all the way at the top, you're pouring from a really high point. If your kettle is only filled halfway, you're pouring from much lower. And this allows you to pour that much closer to the coffee bed. Being able to pour closer to the coffee bed allows you to get a much gentler kind of entry, which allows you to help control the gases a lot more. So that's a really important tip I like to share with everybody. A lot of um, experienced coffee brewers might not even know this, but being able to pour closer to the bed, really great. So don't feel your kettle all the way. So let's quickly talk about the pour technique. Now I think the pour technique is always never talked about enough and never understood well enough at the same time. Now the pour technique for us is extremely important. It's all about the intent of the pour. When we're brewing coffees, we always want to have a very strong first drip of coffee, which means we have to pour as slow as we can and as low and close to the coffee bed as possible to create the most gentle pour possible. This allows us to have the most and the longest amount of time for each the water drop to absorb as much flavor as possible before coming out. When we're brewing the coffees, the pour technique is very simple for us. Aside from pouring slow at the beginning, I always tell people to never move out to the edges until you see all the darker grinds have floated to the top. Now, 
The darker grinds floating through the top means they're unsaturated grinds that need to be pressed down. And so if we're pouring, we start in the middle, stay in the middle until all the darker grinds have lifted up and then you work your way out to the edges, do a flush, which means pour down the edges and then just pour down one side to continue the flow and you hit your desired water. So very simple technique, stay in the middle, work your way out afterwards and that's it. So we're gonna talk about the preparation. Now, I specifically took out the V60 because there is something that's very interesting about the V60s, and that is their filters don't actually fit the V60 perfectly. Unlike every other dripper, the filters actually fit perfectly. The origami, you fold it right down the edge, you put it in here, it fits perfectly. You do that with a Kono, it fits perfectly. The V60 though, I don't know why, it just doesn't fit. If you fold down the edge, let's, let me show you guys. This is right down the edge. And, well, okay, pet peeve, but yeah. We're gonna put this in here. And as I push it all the way down to the bottom, gently, okay, I'm making sure all the sides are touching. You can see that this, there's a section that is actually sticking up. So that means that this thing doesn't actually fit, which is super weird in my opinion. So when you fold the V60, paper filters. You want to fold a little bit further on the inside. Guys, just like that, okay? That should be enough. And we're gonna slip it right in, and now it's gonna fit perfectly. Um, if you can't get it right the first time, just fold it in and then just press the fold down inside the dripper. And that's how you're gonna set it. Um, when you pour the water, you always wanna have your, your, hand, your finger all the way to the bottom, then your next hand comes in and holds it, and then you pour your water. This is the way to set the filter perfectly. Once we have our filter set, we're gonna get our grinds, we're gonna put it in here, we're gonna give it a quick stir. The stirring of the grinds is not to stir some shape up or anything. It's actually to break up all the clumps, remove all the statics so that we can have no clumping and then have the perfect pour. Once it's in there, we're gonna set it and then it's gonna have a little divot in the middle as you guys will be able to see in the demo and we're gonna pour in the middle. Now, the shape that we set the grinds in actually does vary based on the type of beans. I'm gonna go over this in some future videos because changing the bed allows us to catch the water differently. Now, it entirely changes based on how you want to brew your coffee or how you imagine it, but certain coffees want to catch it with a deeper one, and that's the ones that have more gases. The ones with less gases, you want it to have more contact time, so you want to brew it with a more shallow kind of depth. And so, I'm gonna show you guys in another video how this all works, but try it out. It's food for thought, think about it, and let me know what you guys think. So, we're gonna do a quick demonstration of everything, uh, especially the preparation. Um, as you can see, I've got the V60 here. Now, for the single pour method, it works on things even like the Kono, the Switch, the Origami, or even the Chemex, but I specifically picked the V60 just because it is the most commonly used pour over method, and I think that they have a weird kind of filter issue. So here's the filter, I talked about it before. You have to fold a little bit more on the side. Now, another thing to note is I also pour clockwise, so I always have the fold on the left before I fold it towards myself, okay? This allows me to have, I'll show you guys, a, a better flow. But, but as you can see, it's folded a little bit more on the top side. And this way, when we put it in, it will actually fit perfectly. Um, as for how much, it's, it's, it's about like two centimeters, I'd say. Um, it, it, it comes with practice. Like I said earlier though, if you're not good at this and you wanna just like slowly press on the line, you can put it in here and then you see how it sticks up? That's when we just press down on it, uh, easy. Now, with a fold side, it really matters when you're pouring clockwise or counterclockwise. Because I pour clockwise, I want the fold to go with the direction I pour. And I always pour from right to left. So when that happens, I always want the fold to be on the left. Otherwise, if it's on the right, um, sometimes when my kettle is here, you can actually push the grinds into the flap. And you don't really want to do that. So. Uh, quick tip is just to have it on the opposite side that you're pouring from and always fold in the same direction of your pour. Now, 
Aside from that, let me show you guys how I set the filter. I always put my right hand into here, all the way to the bottom. Notice how I have like the middle finger, it's because it's the longest finger and it reaches all the way down to the bottom. We press the fold line and we hold it down on the left with our left hand. And then what we do is when we, when we set the filter, we just pour down the middle and you can let go and you can just move your way out. Now, uh, unfortunately my hand is in a really awkward spot because of the camera, but we're gonna move and fix that later. So this is how you know you've got yourself a perfectly set filter. You can see all the sides are just touching the walls and yeah, so this is really important. Uh, make sure you always properly set your filters. Hope that helps and let's get right into the demo. So we've got ourselves completely set up. Uh, make sure you get rid of the water at the bottom. Uh, we've got our paper filter set and we've got our grinds. Now I'm gonna show everybody how I like to set my grinds first. When we set our grinds, we always give it a quick stir from top to bottom, out to in, and we give it a quick tap. So this is the shape you want it to be looking for, okay? So when we do our pour, uh, we're gonna start right in the middle. We're gonna start the timer first, and we're gonna start right in the middle. And you're gonna look for all the darker grinds to kind of surface first. So we're gonna stay in the middle. You can see all the darker grinds still kind of coming out and it's not stopping. Once we start to see it crackle a little bit more and more of the lighter color stuff comes up, like now, this is when we can start to work our way out. When we work our way out, you can see I'm tipping the kettle more and more and that's because I wanna pour a little bit faster. Once we get to the edges, we do a flush finish and pour to our desired amount. Oh, went a little bit over, but it's okay. Just kind of hard when you're filling. Uh, you want to stir from top to bottom, nice and quickly. Now I'm going to show you guys a little few things when we're looking at the, the pours. Um, the crema is nice and thick, and you'll know that the grinds are sinking when more of the coffee, quote unquote, is starting to show up when all the when all the crema or the foam kind of meets in the middle. Uh, you're gonna see that's the edges. You can start to see more of the coffee. That's when you know that the grinds have started to sink. And we're gonna let that finish. As it's finishing, you can see on the sides, there's not a lot of larger grinds. There's no coffee grinds. Um, people, some people think that's not so good for uh, bypass issues. So bypass is when the water goes up the side of the edges and not through the coffee. But as we're finishing up, you can see the timing is great and we've got the beautiful and the signature dome that we love to have. So this is the perfect kind of finish you want. And I'm gonna show you guys a little few other things as we look at this coffee bed. Now, when we look at the coffee bed, you're gonna see that on the edges, there's quite a bit of, let me see if I can get it closer. There we go. So as we get to the bed, um, we can see that the edges have a decent amount of grinds, like super fines on here. Uh, these super fines, they actually prevent the bypass from happening. You can see that right there. And if they were in the middle of the, in the center of the coffee bed, uh, you're gonna get it, you're gonna have it clogging up the filter and you don't want that. So you wanna stir quickly so you can push all the super fines to the edges and it helps you prevent the bypass from happening. At the same time, it prevents the clogging from happening. Now, when we look into the middle, we're gonna have this beautiful dome shape. You want to have all the foam kind of as evenly in the middle as possible. The more there is, this lighter colored stuff, the kind of heavier texture you're gonna be expecting. When we look at the grinds themselves, you can see that they're, they're slightly granular. They're not super pasty. And that's good because a pastier kind of coffee bed shows we're gonna have an over extracted coffee. So super happy with this brew. Um, I might have gone like eight grams over, but you know, forgive me guys. I, it's hard to, to talk and film the video at the same time. But this is uh, what we consider a very, very good coffee. And uh, it's just time to drink is all that's left. So I hope you guys enjoyed that bit of the demo. I forgot actually in the video earlier to talk about stirring at the end. Uh, so as you guys can see, I always stir at the end of my coffees. Uh, when stirring, we always stir from outside to inside, from top to bottom. It's a quick stir, but a pretty vigorous and quick one. When we're brewing our coffees, we love to guide the coffee grinds with a certain flow rate with the pour technique alone. Now, once we're done the pour technique, we do a stir and the stir allows us to extract 
in a more morbid way, the last little bit of life from this coffee. So we start to extract every last ounce of its good flavors back out. And that's why we stir. Um, it allows us to have a guaranteed even extraction and full extraction for all of our coffees. And that's how we hit a slightly higher extraction rate alongside with our finer grinds. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with me, I actually come from a siphon background. At one point in time, I had actually competed in a bunch of siphon contests and I was looking forward to competing in the world championships. Unfortunately, I didn't go, even though I was selected to represent Canada. And that was because I just didn't have the time and I ended up doing another large project within Vancouver. So I kind of had some set up different priorities there, but in the siphon scene, the stirring is always key. So stirring is always with the intent of kind of guiding or extracting the last little bit of flavor. So keep that in mind and try it out. Um, you never want to stir too long, but I guess, of course, we're going to do a very in-depth video on the stirs as well, because different kinds of beans require different kinds of stirs. And sometimes when we pour a little bit too quickly, we can use the stir to kind of fix our brews. So um, it's a very interesting topic on what it is, but yeah, uh, aside from that, I actually wanted to cover some of the more frequently asked questions that everybody seems to have. Um, and one of the few ones is always the grind size. So yes, we always use medium fine grind size and I never change my grind sizes regardless of the brew technique. I actually adjust, or sorry, my device, my brewing device. I actually changed my brew technique around the grind size, but the grind size is the one thing I will never change. In fact, my espressos are also pulled with this particular grind size. So um, this is my favorite grind size. Um, the next one is always just the water temperature. But like I said in this video, 87 to 91, that's our key sweet spot. Um, and make sure you don't fill the kettle too much. That's really all I can say. Uh, honestly, there's not too many other questions that people have about the technique, but uh, if you do, make sure to leave a comment below and ask us, because as you guys can see from some of my other videos, I am super willing to share as much information as possible. If you write me an essay, I will write an essay back to you. So leave a comment down there. Um, thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the like if you haven't already and uh, catch you guys in the next ones. Bye.